I think I've accidentally painted two people uh, in this scene already and I'm interested to see if you can spot them as well but I'll show you where they are later. So I thought what I'd do is begin this painting by using this uh, very narrow pointed brush and do the drawing with this using some Windsor Violet. I'll do the initial drawing with this anyway and we'll, we'll see how well it works. I want to try and stay fairly loose and free, free if I can. So I'm holding the brush as far back um, away from the bristles as possible. And that's a good way to avoid tightening up. And I would say, generally speaking, it's more conventional to use such a loose style if you're, you know, drawing the human figure or a dancer or something of that ilk. Um, but I think it can work equally well for buildings. Now for these buildings on the side here and here, the upper edges, I'm really just at the moment making them a little bit more dramatic in terms of the sweep because I think it's going to help provide a sense of space. So for the initial drawing, I'm fairly happy with that so far. 
So I'm coming in with my round mop brush and what I'm going to do is um, just wet the paper quite thoroughly wherever there's sky. So now obviously some of, I've got my paper up near vertical as you've probably deduced um, but we'll deal with that uh, in just a moment because obviously some of the water is going to run down as you can see here and here through my drawing which I'm not too concerned about if the lines run but um, when I put the wash on in a moment I don't really want too much sky uh, running down into the buildings. So with that in mind just grab a paper towel and uh, pick up most of those runs. Um, now for the sky I'm kind of thinking I'm probably going to make it quite a bit darker than it is in the uh, in the reference. So So that's the patch of violet I was just using. I'm going to pick up some uh, cerulean blue and mix that in. Perhaps we'll get some of this uh, ocean blue, I think it's called. And that's not too bad. I'm going to kind of a bluey, purpley grey. Uh, so let's see what we get when we whip a bit of this colour in across the top. Help that on its way down. It's not running quite as well as I'd hoped uh, down the page, but. Um, It's starting to make its moves now, so that's good. A bit more on the brush, and I've accidentally picked up a little bit of green in the mix, but uh, it's not showing up too much. And to be honest, it might be quite interesting if uh, we get a bit of green in there. Uh, I, I like what's happening here, um, and I like the kind of breaks around the outlines of the building. Um, let's just lose that little bead and that one. Uh, but on the whole, I'm fairly happy with the way that wash has gone down. So I'm just going to clean my palette now. OK, so now I'm going to lay in some water within the buildings. And as I come up towards the sky, I'm going to do my best to leave a little gap of dry paper in between this new, newly wetted area and the wash that I just put down. So I'm going to apply a mix of colours to the building. So I'm going to start off with some lemon yellow. I'm going to stick with this same round mop brush. And then if I squint at my reference, the light, I think the light, well, the lightest area is just about and the, the focus of the painting. I want to be kind of this tower and the, the building which has the central dome on top. 
or the main dome on top is what I meant to say. And I've, I've chosen yellow because there is a bit of yellow in the... Uh, it's nowhere near as you know, bright as I'm depicting it, but there's a bit of yellow in the colour of the building. But in addition to that, I'm just going to change things up. Got to work fairly quickly with watercolour, so it's difficult to chat sometimes. So grabbing a bit of cad yellow, just to change that a little bit as we move down the building. So we'll, we'll pop in yellow there. Um, now we've got some gaps in the wash here, but I think that's could be advantageous later. Then at the moment I'm kind of thinking I might leave this little section, even though I did put the water in there, I might leave that little section uh, unpainted. The two side buildings I want to be somewhat darker with this side being the darker, darkest of the two or the darker of the two. So that, but let's make this a little darker by adding a touch of uh, yellow ochre to what we've got on the palette already. Got a bit of a run of the sky into the into the building there but again i'm not too concerned about that at the moment now some burnt sienna added to again what i've got on the palette with a bit more yellow ochre i'm picking up a bit of a lizard in there that was from a previous painting but i think that's okay as well so we'll come down fairly quickly on the right here it's not quite as dark as i thought it might be Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's more or less going in the direction I want it so far. Now, while that's still wet, I want to come in and begin to indicate some windows. So I've picked up a, a flat brush, going in with some of this ocean blue. And we'll use this as the beginnings of our shadow colours. So the lighter shadows are some of the window, or lighter, how can I put it, lighter dark tones are some of the windows on this building. So I'm going to put a little dash there. And then a longer line down there. Then some slightly more blocky shapes there. And I kind of, you know, if those bleed into the, the wet wash, that's what I want really. So we'll put another slightly bigger vertical mark there, and then a slightly bigger and wider vertical mark there. Another long and thin one there and then as we move round towards us so I'm not copying the architecture exactly as you've probably noticed already but I'm just going to add a little bit of the violet into that mix now just to change the colour that I'm putting down for these windows And then I'm going to keep going with that uh, using a similar technique. For the main part of the building, so we've got a dark shadow smack in the middle there. And then we've got a slightly narrower one. Over here slightly, and then we'll symmetrize that. And then in between those blocks of shadow, because we've got double pillars, we can put 
a narrower band of shadow. Down there and there. Another one down there, which didn't go in quite the right spot. We'll press on. And then in under the eaves of the roof. There and there. And then pick up a bit more of the violet in behind there. We've got a little... No, I think I actually did. I kind of messed that up. Oh, no, it's probably OK. No, no, it's not really. Um, let's put a correction line in. So that should be over there somewhere. So I've kind of messed. I kind of symmetrized things to the original mark, which isn't quite what I wanted to do. But because uh, my corrected drawing was over here. But that's OK. What we'll do is we'll just add a, a few more lines there. Then coming around here. A couple of windows peeking out from behind the, the triangular bit. Going back into almost pure violet now for this uh, circular window or viewing aperture. I'm not sure what it is. So that'll do for now. And we'll keep going with that colour up here. That's a bit too dark, isn't it? But we'll go back into the more dilute stuff for the other side. And then hopefully what's I'm hoping this is going to be a bit of dry brush as I sweep around the, the base of this dome. Not too bad. Just using the corner of the brush to suggest some of the windows. Coming back into the paler blue. There's another window here. Approximately. And then we'll go back in to the stronger uh, violet. And now that I've committed to that being the central shadow, I'm going to have to keep things consistent with my drawing. So we'll go down there, there, and there, and let that peter out a little bit as we come over to here. And then there's a tree there, so I'll probably pop that in in, in a moment, I think. Uh, and then again, in between those, we've got um, a line of shadow for the double pillars. But again, you know, I'm not trying to capture them exactly. Um, the idea is just to create a pattern of marks, which will give the illusion of the general structure of the building. Coming back up here, there's a bit of shadow there. And then I'd originally planned to paint the dome uh, blue, and I may may yet, but um, as we've got sort of dry, not much paint on the brush, I may as well dry brush in some some marks which help to describe the curvature of the dome. I'm just pondering whether to paint this tree in blue or keep going with the purple scheme. So I think I'm going to go with the purple. So let's grab my oval round brush. Not got enough paint on there, not enough water. So I have got a bit of green there and as I'm running out of out of the violet, I'll 
keep that on there. There we go. I think actually that green might work quite nicely on the right hand side, even though it's not very strong. I think I'm going to use the same brush actually to just hint at some of the architectural details. So I haven't tried this before with this brush. So we'll see what happens if we come in down there and then go narrow, narrow, slightly broader, slightly broader, slightly broader. down there, narrow, narrow, slightly broader, slightly broader, slightly broader. Okay, so I've just added some more of the Windsor Violet to... I've got some cauliflowers forming here, but again, I don't mind that. I'm pro I'll probably incorporate them into some architectural details in a bit. Uh, same, same down here. So uh, I want you know, slightly stronger colour because the road is quite dark and I've, I've darkened the sky. So I've squeezed out some more of that Windsor Violet from the tube. Coming back in with my flat brush <clears throat> and um, I, haven't, I haven't wetted the paper. Uh, so we'll, we'll just sweep in. Some brush strokes to suggest the curvature of the road. Let's go super dark in there. And then in my reference, the photos, um, the photo, the uh, the pavement's quite wet, um, especially on the right. So what we'll do is um, I'm not going to make it overly reflective, I don't think, but just going to grab some burnt sienna. A bit of red. Not really using the right brush here. I just just realised, but um, we'll I'm not sure if that reads as a, a reflection or not, but I quite like the the effect for the moment. So I'm going to let that dry completely now, and then we'll come back in and make modifications where necessary. So the first layer of paint is completely dry, and my thoughts at the moment are, I want to make the cathedral the centre of focus of the painting. So with that in mind, my intention is, at the moment at least, is to leave the building on the left and the building on the right and this unpainted area as they are. I would like to include some people in the, in the image to give the buildings a sense of scale. So I'm probably going to put a couple here, maybe one here. And then maybe one, one or two over here as well. We'll, we'll see. Um, obviously, there are inaccuracies, but I like the liveliness of it. And in fact, my favourite part, I think, at the moment is this bit here. Even though I got the line of that roof wrong and had to correct it and the pillars aren't right. I, I, I don't mind that too much. I'm less happy with this bit. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what we can do next. So in terms of tone, I've used, or in terms of colour rather, I've used mostly yellow and the violet. There's a bit of blue and green and red going on, but in general it's a, it's a yellow and violet colour scheme. Oh, this tree as well is far too uh, weak at the moment, so I need to make that a bit punchier. Um, but what I'm thinking is, uh, I've got my Windsor Violet here, and I've just added some cadmium yellow from 
my tube of watercolour. So I'm going to use the pure cad yellow just to add a couple of touches of the gold on top of the, the spires here. And then I'm going to mix that together with the violet in the hope of creating some kind of uh, tertiary colour, which is harmonious with the purple and yellow I've got down here, but I can use as a deep shadow colour. So that's that's the plan. Um, so let's uh, get some of this yellow. And again, I'm not going to be worrying about exact architectural details, but there's a a lump of yellow or an orb of gold or whatever it is. Don't know whether they would actually use gold on the outside of buildings. Then we've got the cross on top um, and then on the other spire we've got Another little patch there. And another patch there. OK, so having done that, let's take some more of that yellow and mix it in with the violet. And I want a higher proportion of the violet than the yellow, but I'm getting quite a nice brown there, actually. That's kind of that's kind of a cool colour. So looking at my reference, where do I want to add dark shadows? And the main ones that are jumping out at me are, I think I want to tidy up this circle a bit. Now, there are some quite dark shadows um, with these windows and in here, but I quite like the, the lightness of, of that area. So, but I am going to add some to this tower. And I'm going to come back later on the detail there. So I'm going to leave those windows as they are, but for this part here, I think I can afford to add some darker shadows. So just in the top section. Get a bit more water on the brush and we'll just I think I probably want to perhaps a bit too dark there, but we'll press on for the moment. I might lift some of that off in just a second. Now, down on the ground level, there is what appears to be a doorway here. And then some shadow at the top. And there's a bit of shadow at the top of this gap. Some kind of archway there. A little bit of shadow up there as well. And I think I'm actually going to use this colour for the tree in a moment. Um, 
So before I go too much further, let's uh, let's lift off. I'm just going to sp spray this paper towel with water. Let's just lift off some of some of this. fairly happy with those shadows now. Okay, so back to my oval round that I used for the tree before. This time I'm going to come in with this new, new colour. That's a bit more like it. <clears throat> I'm just going to get some of the paint off the brush. Fray the edges a bit. There we go. That's one of them. Okay. put a little bit of shadow under that tree as well. So back to the small round brush now. I want to put a figure in here. off in the distance. And we'll perhaps give that person a companion. So I'm going to keep the position of the head about the same. The height in the painting is the head about the same, but we'll put another figure here. A little closer. And I kind of feel I may have made that foreground figure a little bit too big. But I don't I don't think it's too bad. But that's starting to give a little bit of a sense of scale to the painting. And I'm just wondering about whether to include some other figures in here. But, you know, that said, I don't want to detract too much from the main focus. But perhaps I can put a bit of a vehicle coming around the corner off in the distance. So as I'm drawing this I'm deliberately leaving bits out of the um, of the outline. So it's just enough to suggest the presence of that vehicle, hopefully. And then there is a, uh, a statue out in front of the, the main building here. Which 
which I'm not going to attempt to draw accurately. It's an archway of shadow back here. I don't know how I missed that before actually, but I think I must have been squinting too much. Okay, so I'm now going to return to my uh, very narrow brush, the one that's designed for drawing tree branches and things. And we're going to dip back into the yellow and the purple, and mix up some kind of brown again. Okay, so I'm going to use this now, try, going to try and continue to stay loose, but to add some more lively lines to, to the painting to begin to suggest some of these architectural details without actually drawing them at all. And I've got to be careful here not to do too much and describe too much, um, but I do want to bring the focus of the painting. I want it to be this building, so. Now what I'm doing here is just kind of converting these cauliflowers into a part of the architecture even though you know, it doesn't actually reflect what's exactly there by taking a little line along the edge of those cauliflowers it kind of incorporates them into the sort of liveliness of what we've got going on I just felt the need to put in that kind of 
line of dark tone to sort of just anchor the building to the to the ground. Um, and then I'm just going to just practice in the corner of the painting here. Yeah. So if I if I sweep this brush sideways along, I think it should produce some interesting marks. But I'm kind of hesitant to do that for some reason. But what I am thinking now is I I want to make this side. This building here, even though I said I wasn't going to touch it, I kind of want to make that darker, I think, because I think it will make this more of the focus. I'm not so sure about this one. I might just add, I might add some similar line work to this one in a moment. Perhaps I'll, I think I'm going to keep this, um, my brush loaded with this one, and I'm just going to put a darker wash on this right hand building because then that should pop against the unpainted area. That should still stay looking fairly bright. And then if I do a little bit of line work over here, that'll kind of lead the eye in, is my hope. I'm just pondering what colour to make that. Perhaps I should keep going with this same colour. But I'll water it down, so let me just show you what I've got on my palette. So at the moment I've got this mix of the violet and the yellow, but if I just add a lot of water to that, then in terms of colour scheme it should still be in keeping with what I've got going on in the painting. Um, so this may ruin things, we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah, well, I don't mind the colour. I quite like the areas of the wash that are broken there. Let's continue that down. So I personally feel that's improved things. I could almost do with being a little darker actually. Let's go in again. So we'll need to wait until things dry back to, to really see the impact that that's had. Um, and now having done that, I'm tempted to add some of that onto this purple road here. To maybe suggest we have got a bit more of a wet road than we than I had before. I just kind of I'm fairly happy with that so far, I think. So I'm going to go back to keeping with this weak wash, but I'm going to go back to my little branch brush, as I'll call it. I think that is the official name, actually. Um, and I'm just going to add a little bit more drawing here, but very loose and quick. Just to provide a little bit more structure to this building, but also I'm putting my marks down in a way that I hope is going to lead the eye towards the main event, which is obviously the cathedral. I'm just going to now add just the very palest touch of yellow 
mix it mix it in with that brown a little bit just down here to same and again I'm going to leave that to dry now I'm not quite sure if it needs any more part of me wants to put a little little pop of color in there but um, I'm not quite sure so we'll leave it as it is for now and then come back in a bit all right well this layer of the paint is now dry and um, I've got a couple of different thoughts. Um, the first is the line here on the edge of this left hand building. I think I need to make that stronger so that it looks like it's definitely in front of the tree. The second thing is I've got some blue in the building here and I think if I colour this car in a similar blue then that will be a nice echo of that colour and I may also colour the statue a pale blue as well. I think that might work quite well. Those two bits of blue and this bit here and then thirdly this line I don't think is particularly helpful uh, so I think I might add a line I might try and remove that I'm not sure but I might add a line just kind of sweeping around here to establish the sense of perspective a little better I also want to add a bit of brighter color to this guy in silhouette here and then one of the great joys with watercolor is the kind of surprises you get so that it creates for you so I think I've accidentally painted two people uh, in this scene already and I'm interested to see if you can spot them as well but I'll show you where they are later. So first of all I'm just grabbing some cerulean blue and Fill in the car there. Now that's kind of formed a little bead along the bottom edge of the car, uh, but I think that's kind of cool. So let's um, add some to the statue. And I may come in with a bit of uh, white in a bit oh, for this statue, we'll see. Uh, but I quite like, I know you can't see the left hand building at the moment, but I quite like the inclusion of the blue there. I think that echoes the, the bit in the building. I'm just going to put a little line there for the, for the roof of the car, uh, this perspective line. As I said, I'm going to kind of sweep it that way. I think that works rather better now. Uh, just just that little touch. Now the question is, did you spot the people? So let me show you where I think they are. So I think there's a guy here. We've got a nose. There's his brow. He's got a little bit of a widow's peak. There's his head. He's wearing a jacket, a shirt, dark trousers, and maybe he's got his hands in his pockets. And then there's just about another one here head perhaps, legs. I'm not sure about the second one. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, but I can, this guy I definitely want to include. Now the question is how do I go about doing that because I don't want to make him too obvious. Um, so I think what I shall do to begin with is I'm just going to paint around him rather than paint him, if that makes sense. So picking up some of that brown I created from the violet and the yellow previously. And that's coming out a little bit. Um, Gonna put it too illustrative, so not quite sure how to fix that. But just adding a lot more water, I'm hoping will help.
So I'm hoping you can start to see him come to life now. I will add just a couple of lines. I think I'm going to leave him like that. I quite ho hopefully you can see see him appear now, um, and I quite like that. And the question is, do I want to put the, another guy in? And I think I do because I'm sort of seeing here. This could be his head, and then he could have his arm and forearm coming this way. And there's almost a hand as if he's sort of resting on something. I don't know what that would be, but I don't really care too much. I just like the idea of having these figures appear out of nowhere. Um, so let's see if we can do something similar with him. Obviously, these people don't have to be fully defined. It's kind of the point. Almost got a pair of sunglasses there on this guy. So that's. Uh... So let's go with that. And then I'm sort of thinking, you know, I might just leave him like that. So I've got one, two, three, four, five people. Um, I think that's probably enough. Um, just going to add a couple more. Sorry, I think I went off screen a little bit there, but just added a couple, a little a couple of verticals in there. So yeah, I really quite like. If I just pull back a minute, yeah. So I really quite like the fact that those two are sort of very subtly painted and hidden there. Um, and they're just sort of appearing out of the wall and painted in a different style to the to the other half. So the next thing then is, as mentioned, to put in this vertical. So back to my tree branch brush. It's not really dark enough, so I'm pick up a little bit of neutral tint, mix that in. I just yeah I think that's helped a bit that's just sort of brought that building forward without having to darken the whole thing now sticking with my branch brush but now I've switched to pure titanium white interactive acrylic and I'm just going to use this to um, put a few lines down on the road without being overly fussy about it. I 
And I'm actually now thinking the dark line I've put in here might be better served by being a white line. Or at least for part of it. Yeah, I think I prefer that. Um, now, is there anywhere else on the main building that I could do with a little lick of white? Um, I'll put a couple of highlights in. But I don't, I kind of like the way the main building looks at the moment, so I'm not going to go too wild. Got a little lick on that statue back there. So I've definitely broken a lot of conventional approaches to watercolour painting of architecture with this picture. For example, the two towers, they're not really vertical at all. I mean, the central one with the dome isn't too bad, but the one on the left is obviously tipped over to the left. The one on the right that I left completely unpainted is um, has ended up sort of off a little bit of an angle as well. And then obviously I've changed the perspective of the street. I've changed the colors of the buildings. I've kind of, you know, just made up my own colors really for the reflections and the statue and, and all sorts of things like that. Um, but I feel personally that although it's weird because for the most part, I just used the violet and the yellow and then the browns I created were from a combination of those two. Obviously, I did stray from that color scheme a little bit. I used a bit of blue here and there and a little bit of yellow for the crosses on top of the building. But on the whole, most of the painting is, is sort of underpinned by those two colors. And so for me, although it's weird and the color scheme is odd, I, I like it. And um, I am so, so happy about those two people which appeared out of nowhere on in the bottom right hand corner. And for me, that's one of the most fantastic things about watercolor is that if you just learn to kind of let go and do its own thing and not try too hard, sometimes these little magical moments happen. And so for me, that's my favorite part of the painting. I'm going to be thinking about that technique for the future. Um, can I sort of persuade the watercolor gently to reveal more people within my paintings or it might not just be people it might be other things as well anyway hope you enjoyed uh watching this one as much as i enjoyed painting it and i hope to see you next time thank you very much for watching